Okay, should I should I call the meeting to an order? Yes, at least call it and then we can just kind of wait a few minutes for everyone else. Okay, uh, my name is Alicia Walker and I am calling this meeting to order as co-pair. Governor Baker's March 12 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law allow us to hold this virtual meeting of the working group. Given that we have a quorum present, I am calling the June 3rd, 2020 meeting of the Community Safety Working Group to an order at 5.37 p.m. I will call upon each member of the working group by name. At that time, they should unmute their mic and say present. This will indicate that they can hear me and we can hear them. Please remember to mute your mic after saying present. Deborah Ferreira. Present. Darius Cage. Present. Tashina Bowman. Present. Okay. And is it okay to go forward in the agenda, Ms. Moisson, or should we wait for other members? No, we can um, open it up to the general public if you would like for public comment. Okay. And I can oh. just pull up the agenda. Ms. Moyston, do you mind just sending out the link again to everyone, just to make sure everyone- Yeah, I did. Well, when I oh, sent okay. it to you, I sent it to everybody. Oh, gotcha. And I'm texting Pat now to see, to make sure that she saw it. Yeah, I texted Russ too, so. Well, Russ said he might not be here this evening. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, so um, I will take a couple minutes to review the agenda. We will first hear any public comment that members of the public want to provide to the working group. We will not respond to your comments, but we will listen to your comments carefully. We will then hear comments from the members and review. Uh, wait, did we get any minutes, Ms. Moyston? No. Uh, yeah, okay, so we won't have a review of the minutes today. Um, we will have a discussion on the second part of our charge and whether or not we'd like to request an extension. Um, a discussion <clears throat> on how we would like to develop a strategy to move forward with the second half of our charge. Discuss a preliminary design for the resident oversight board. Um, after we will discuss the CSWG as a standing committee or the possibility of a creation of a new committee. And lastly, we will try to leave time to discuss the CSWG summer meeting schedule. Our first order of business is the public comment section of the agenda. If any member of the public would like to make a statement, please raise your hand. I will recognize you and ask Ms. Moyston to turn on your microphone. I ask that comments be limited to no more than three minutes. The working group will not be responding to your comments, but we will be listening intently. Yes, so Ms. Judith Glazer has her hand raised. Um, okay, can you please bring Judith Glazer and Ms. Moyston? Good evening. Hi. Hello, Ms. Glazer. So, you know, I've been with you on most of this journey, watching uh, very intently, and I'm glad Mr. Bachelman is here tonight. I want to, th want to thank all of you. I'm sorry, not everybody's there for your incredible work. And um, also for, hmm, the, you know, dealing, dealing with mm, all the stress and anxiety of what's going on. And I also, um, as a resident for more than 50 years, um, you know, I'm looking on, on all this with joy. And I, I also wanna thank, um, Paul Bachman for his uh, part in it and for encouraging you and guiding and appointing you to begin with and um, also for um, changing his recommendation. And I hope that all will go forward smoothly from here. And I will be making that point to the town council members. So I, I mainly just wanted to thank you for all your work and the hardship it's brought. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Glaser. Uh, 
Um, do we have anyone else who would like to public comment at this time? No other hands are raised at this time. Okay, thank you, Ms. Moyston. Um, this is the time for members to update us on any work they are doing or any events that are coming up. Is there anyone who has anything that they would like to share? Okay, so um, it looks like we don't have any um, updates at this time. So I'll just move right into the first order of business that we have here on the agenda. Um, and that is uh, a request for an extension. So the deadline for the second part of our charge is June 30th for our report. Um, and I believe that we were all in agreement that we would need an extension, but I just wanted to confirm with the group first. Um, and we have Mr. Bachelman is here today, so we may be able to just have a discussion on that now. Um, Ms. Ferreira, did you have something you wanted to say first? Yeah, I mean, the only thing I didn't see on the agenda, though, was, I guess, where do we stand with the first part of our charge? I mean, I, I, I know that we did the finance committee that obviously we, we stated what we had to state with that with them. I know that Mr. Bachelman kind of changed his um budget in terms of increasing it, but obviously not to the point that we wanted it increased to. So I guess where do we stand on that? You know, I know we're already going to the second part of the charge, but I still, I guess I'm fuzzy on the first part of the charge when we stand on, on you know, in regards to that. Mr. Bachelman. Thank you. Um, so what happens now, the finance committee is, uh, they make their recommendation to the, to the town council that recommendation will be delivered on Monday, June 7th at the town council meeting. The town council will not vote at that time. It's my understanding. The, the town council president expects the town council to vote on the budget, which this is part of on June 21st. At Monday's meeting, there's a public forum on the capital project uh, list uh, that happens. I forget exactly when that happens. It's 6.30 and then um, they go into the, the regular agenda for the committee, for the council. Do you know what time they might be um, sharing the, what they'd be recommending in regards to our recommendations and what you stated? So I think, I, I don't know what time um, the agenda should be posted or should be, it, will, it should be posted by now, but uh, usually what the council president does is do a timeline over the weekend where she thinks things are gonna be so she can tell people when to be at the meeting. I can share that with you uh, yeah. when she thinks it will happen, sure. That would be good. And then June 21st. So is there anything else that you think they would need from us at this point? Or is it now just in their hands? I think the, re the, the thing that's in their hands is the budget that was presented by the town manager, which has then been changed based on the work. And so that they have that as of last Thursday. Okay. Have, have you made any other changes since? since Not since we, Thursday, no. Since Thursday? And uh, what about, has there been any other meetings around creating CRESS or any of, of the other recommendations? Because that was the other thing we wanted to make sure that we would be part of the conversation, mm -hmm. or at least a mem some of our members. So that would be, that's a good topic. I do want to, so I have, I continue to have conversations every day with different um, department heads and other people in town. Uh, people who aren't even, you know, part of this town staff think talking through how this can work because um, there's a lot of energy to creating uh, this program, which I'm really excited about. Um, we, you know, I think in my presentation, I talked about putting together a group and asking for representatives from the working group to participate. Um, and so if that's something that you're, you know, we can talk more about that, that would be a really good thing because we're anxious to move on it pretty quickly. So if there's, you know, a couple of members who would like to participate in that, that would, I'd welcome that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Keep us posted. I guess when when is the invitation going to be done? I guess. So we're you know I'd like to get moving on this like soon within the next couple of weeks. Uh, so I think if you so the challenge we have is a lot of staff people. I guess one of the questions is uh, whether people are available during the day. And I know all you folks all work, and um, I try maybe I try and do it at the end of the 
day or something like that to make make available for town staff and to make it palatable for both sides to be par participating. Uh, when they're not public meetings, this is not a community safety working group meeting. This is sort of the getting into the details of what we really need to um, get going on. Okay, yeah, so I guess that would be the thing, like when are you all meeting and the, the time so that then we could know which members would yeah, so we haven't set a time or anything like that. So if, if you had members who want, if you could choose the members that you're interested, who are interested in participating, we'll try and work around everybody's schedule. Um, I also have a question, Mr. Bachelman, just in regards to Deborah's question. Um, I think there was a scheduled finance committee meeting for June 1st. Did that meeting take place? I think they met June 1st, but not June 2nd. I think June 1st is yeah, when they the hit. June second meeting was, um, I think, canceled. I know that one of the meetings was canceled, and yep. I think that there may have been some discussion of the Crest program at that meeting. So I wasn't actually able to attend that meeting, but I did hear some feedback and heard that there was some discussion around the Crest and that there may have even been a vote that happened at that meeting. So I was just wondering if you knew anything about that. Um, just because I didn't have a chance to actually view the meeting myself. So they met, they had two meetings on June. If I get my calendar right, Jen, you can help me with this. June 1st, I think they had a meeting at, in the afternoon at one. And is that the date they had the 5.30 meeting? Or is that, no, that was last Thursday. <sighs> I'm getting, so let me just check my calendar. Oh, so we're not talking about last, last week, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> they did have a meeting on June 1st at one o'clock, yes. They did. And the question is, did they vote? I, I really don't remember if they voted or not, honestly. I can look at, I can look at what they did. So, so let me, let me, I, I'll get an answer before, you, we, before we leave tonight. So I guess my, I would just post to the um, co-chairs is just, yeah, for us to figure out at some point, you know, we want to go about finding some members that could be available to take part in this, um, this group that Paul has. Mrs. Owen. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm really interested to being to being on this committee. I do have a little bit more free time after this week. I'm traveling right now, so that's why I, my video's off. Um, but yeah, I'd be interested to sit on this group. And I think it's important that CS, other CSWG members who are interested um, join the conversation on the details. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Um, okay, and welcome, Ms. Pat. I would also be happy to be a part of that group. Um, I don't know how many people we were interested in sending or wanting to sit on that, if anybody else was also interested. Sorry, Ms. Ferrer, was that a hand? No, I, I'm, I, I could be like a backup. I think it'd be good to have at least the two of you. And then obviously if this time days you all can't make it or things like that, you know, then let me know and I could, you know, I think there should always be representation at those meetings. Yeah. Because I know great. with my busy schedule because of the, you know, work and everything, I might not be able to make it all the time. That's why I don't want to be like, you know, say, yes, I'm going to be there every time, but I would definitely be a backup so we can make sure we always have representation. So Ms. Walker, what is your availability during the day? Do you have it? Um, so, well, I work full time uh, from an office, but I am in an office. So if there, sometimes I have popped in uh, the finance committee meetings from my office. Mm -hmm. So like I can do it during my lunch break because sometimes they fall usually from one to three, um, which depending on how busy work is, I can just pop in. I just can't be really an active participant, but I can like sort of passively listen while I'm there, which is what I do sometimes. But if we scheduled it around lunchtime, that might be more like yeah. 12, 12, one ish. That would yeah. help. Yeah. And Ms. Owen, does that work for you as well? Yeah, that works for me. Okay. So let me, let me see what our, when we can get the next meeting going, get folks going. Okay. Thank you. 
And then actually, why don't you just put me in there? If you guys want to do lunch, it, I could be on there. And then obviously, we're when not providing I, lunch. I'm not providing <laughs> lunch, but I, if it's during lunchtime, I can, I can, I can be available. So I can just join the meetings that I can. And I can. yeah, we just, we just can't have a quorum of the, of the crew, of, oh, of the working. Then group. do you think it's better to do two? Then keep it at two. I would, uh, given the size of the group, I would ask it to be two with, with backup. And and I think, let's, let's leave it, like I said, then, two, the them and then backup for me. When and I think there. the other thing that we can do is report back to the full working group or the, or the co-chairs can, depending on how you want to handle that. Yeah, that would be great. Yep. You all can just report back on, you know, yeah. and put it on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Hey, everybody. What is the group we're talking about? So this is about um, the group that Paul has in terms of working out the details for the CREST program. So um, we're making sure that there's members from our group on that group. So uh, Alicia and Brianna will be on and I'll be a backup in case they can't make it so that we can always make sure that there's at least two people going to those meetings. I'm also interested in joining the group as well. Well, that's what we were just talking about, that because of the whole thing about having a quorum, that probably be better to have two members and then maybe me and you could be back up so that okay. we can't make it. We, we can go in, either one of us or both of us, if either of them can make it. Because my time is very flexible. I, I'm able to, I'm self-employed, so I'm able to, you know, move from one office to another and do what I need to do. Excellent. I, I'm fine being a backup. Okay, so myself and Miss Pat, we'll be back up. And, and I'm sorry. Yes, Mr. Bachman. So I, what the council voted, um, I just got that. Someone was kind enough to send it to me. Thank you. Sorry. So the, the, the council, the finance committee took two motions, one to recommend to the town council that they approve the FY22 operating budget. And the second motion was to recommend to the town council that they direct the town manager to seek funds to fill eight community responder positions and other elements of the program as proposed on the May 27th, 2021 and report back to the town council and residents of Amherst how he plans to accomplish this no later, later than January 31, 2022. I can email that to folks. And this is what will be reported to the town council on Monday. So that means they increased it then, right? They didn't increase the budget. They are saying this is what they want to see happen. Yeah, no, I understand not the budget, but I'm saying in terms of the positions for credit, yeah. they did increase the number. Okay. That's, that's what they're requesting, yeah. So this is for fin from finance committee? It's, it's a recommendation from the finance committee to the town council, Thank yeah. You. I apologize, Mr. Bachelman, can you just please repeat those for me? I'm emailing it to, to okay, everyone great. right now. Thank you. Ms. Ferreira. So question for Mr. Bachelman, so nothing though on any of the other recommendations, because it seems like that was specific to Crest, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. And if, um, unless anybody else has any other questions regarding um, these meetings or this topic, I would like to just go back to the um, discussion regarding the deadline for the second part of our charge. Is that okay with you, Ms. Ferreira? Or do you have um, other questions regarding the first phase of our work? Um, I guess the only thing that kind of leaves me a little bit uncertain is, yeah, I mean, you know, if there's not anything else in terms of strategy, right, from our group, is there anything else that we need to do to kind of um, share with the town council members or whomever in terms of our recommendations again or making it specific or kind of uh, answering any other questions? Because, you know, again, I'm happy that they made... Um, uh, they voted to increase the number of CREST um, positions. Uh, however, it, you know, it still wasn't to the level that we would have wanted. And also the other recommendations, it seemed like it, it wasn't changed. I do know that for the, at least the director of um, 
diversity, equity, inclusion that you included that in your budget. So that's good, uh, Mr. Bachelman. Um So yeah, so that's my only thought, you know? So I, I'm not saying that we need to answer it right now, but that might be something that we need to kind of still keep at our forefront. I mean, there's a meeting now. So Ms. Pat, just so you know, on the 7th, I guess the finance committee is gonna be sharing their budget. And then on the, on the 21st, the town council will be voting on the, on the budget. So, so those are the things that, you know, it's in my mind right now. If I may. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I think um, from last Thursday um, <clears throat> finance meeting, we didn't have a chance to actually discuss or explain our budget. I think um, the next step for our group is to actually try to explain the comparison because I think, you know, the public are under the impression, oh, they're asking for two point something million compared to police uh, APD four point something, but that's not the point. Because with our CREST program, we're talking about dispatchers as well. So we really need to do better job in our messaging in terms of our budget, because I've gotten inquiries from just residents and they didn't, they didn't realize that part of our budget for CREST also included um, dispatchers. So I think we need to test things out. And I also think that we need to put something in the paper to really um, explain what we're proposing, because I had a conversation with, the, with Scott, the reporter, last week. And he actually agrees that we should put something out in the paper to counter what people think um, we're asking for. Because we need, really need to compare apple to apple, okay? So if we're talking APD budget, we need to be talking about responder budget. And then if we're talking about communication center budget, we should be talking about press dispatcher budget and so on and so forth. We can compare human, human resources department budget, which is, you know, might be similar to DEI budget. Like you will try to compare apple to apple. Um, right now people, they're not getting it. And I'd be happy to, you know, to put out something that we can send to the town council. Because I'm pretty sure that they get a lot of documents a lot. And we can assume that they took the time to read everything. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Ms. Owen. I'm also, I, I agree with Ms. Pat entirely. And I'm wondering how the group feels about putting out some sort of press release so the public has a more clear idea of our proposals and what we're asking for. I was really concerned by the Gazette article that was posted about our group and our recommendations. I didn't like the title. And I do agree with Ms. Pat that um, our budget isn't being thoroughly explained. So I think that if the group is on board, I think we should do a press release or write something to the paper. And I also think that would be a way to hold town council members accountable, just given the, the overwhelming amount of support for um, all of our recommendations, not just CRESS. Thank you, Ms. Owen, Ms. Pat. So I would like to volunteer myself, maybe work with uh, um, Brianna for the press release. I know she said it something already, so is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I made a first draft of something over the weekend. Um, but yeah, I would love to do that. Okay. And we can get that out to the group ASAP. Yep. Do you guys, what, when do you guys need it by? Sunday, Monday? Does anybody have a preference? I'm not sure. Um, just as soon as you guys can find a time that works well for you guys to get together this week. I think... Uh, Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, I mean, I think um, you all can let us know like when you're going to send it, send it out by when it would work with your schedule and then let us know by when you want to get our feedback by, you know what I'm saying? Because that usually works well when you say, well, get it back to me by Monday at 12 or Tuesday at 12 or whatever. And then, and then that would make it easier. And then for me, I'm thinking whatever you all write out for the press release and, and the draft and whatever we kind of finalize once we come yep. up with 
final version, we could tweak that and, and kind of send that out to the town council too, you know? Sure. Like, of course, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so Brianna, your schedule, is it realistic to have it sent out by Monday morning? Um, so I'm away until Wednesday, but I did work okay. on a first draft over the weekend and it's about two pages right now. So okay. I could send it out to the group to make edits and everybody could just um, edit it. And I will, I still have access to my laptop and everything. So okay. Monday does work for me. Okay, so yeah. So we'll send something out, you know, maybe Sunday, uh, Monday morning. Okay. Okay. And when do you want it back to you so that- Okay. So give Tuesday. everybody enough time. Tuesday by, when does the um, media, I think they have deadline every week. I don't know if it's Monday or Tuesday. I'm not sure. I probably will check with Scott. Okay. I can look, you know, I can look online too. Either it's Monday or something like that, for MS Bulletin or, and also for the Gazette, MS Bulletin. Well, okay, then just like send us a tech, uh, um, an email if you need it uh, sooner. Sooner, okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll say Tuesday morning. Okay. By 10 a.m. Okay. Okay, thank you, Ms. Pat and Ms. Owen for working on that. Um, and then also I just had a couple of comments because I'm just looking at a few things here. And so um, just in regards to Ms. Ferreira's questions in terms of strategy moving forward and what else we can do, um, I have a couple of thoughts. So the two uh, bodies that we were interacting with were the finance committee and the town council. Um, and so I'm looking at notes from the June 1st meeting. It looks like they've already done a vote um, to pass the budget as is. So. Um, not that I think it's a bad idea to continue to explain our budget to them, but they have already done their vote. So there's no changing that I don't believe at this point. So the only vote that we have left is the town council vote. So if we want to continue to reach out to the town council or continue to reach out to specific council members, I'm not sure um, if that could be a strategy moving forward. Um, I absolutely agree with the thought of a press release and maybe even an op-ed for the paper. Um, just like our opinion and our thoughts also, and then just a factual piece so that people who haven't been as involved can get an idea of what is happening. Um, and so I just wanted to offer those thoughts as well. Okay, so yeah, I need to raise my hand. Yes, Ms. Uh, so, um, Couple more things before we move to part B. I think that um, if if the if if the town council decide to set up the resident oversight board, um, their charge will be a lot just dealing with APD stuff. I think that should be. Um, a group or board that should focus, and I don't, you know, the word equity has been used so much that I'm sick and tired of it. I've been, I've been, you know, reflecting a lot after last week in this town that are so, that are so many boards that many of the BIPOC folks are not represented. And I and I I tend to watch uh, planning board a lot, and I see discre uh, discrepancy between the power they have. If you compare it, for example, for human rights commission, I think we need to think about establishing BIPOC affairs commission, and part of the charge will be to because I heard. Um, some counselors say that BIPOC employees come and they leave. They, of course they leave because sometimes they don't get the support. I will hope that they, this BIPOC Affairs Commission, okay, will um, monitor the progress that the CREST program is doing, will work collaboratively with the DI, DEI, director, just like we have the human, uh, human resources director working with uh, 
the uh, civil uh, the human right commission just as we have the town planner director christine working with uh, uh the planning board and i can go on and on and on so we don't have anything to really monitor um who you know who is making decisions uh to monitor the input of BIPOC folks in this town, you know, who are the people making decisions in power, white people, um, follow the money, you know, who is benefiting for all the taxes that are being raised in this town, mostly white people, from businesses to home ownership, we have to have a dedicated board to really monitor the progress that a town will be making moving forward. I will even go as far as to part of the job of that board would be to provide input officially about the performance of our town manager as well. Um, I just feel that um, a BIPOC community here have been have been taken for granted for a, a long, long time. And it's time, you know, for the town to include us in decision making process and sitting on the table um, and trying to figure out what is best for everyone in this town and not just for some people. So something we need really need to think, think about to so have the resident oversight board to do both, both CRES and APD. I just feel that it will be a lot and you know, CRES might be like in the back burner because there's a lot of work to be done you know, to uh, supervise APD. It's, it's going to be a lot of work dealing with the union. It will be a lot of work. So we have to be realistic what we are asking the resident oversight board to do, and I can go on and on. So something to think about. I think Chris, the way I say it is to provide support for that program. The way I see the resident oversight board is accountability of APD. That's the way I see the differences. Just like, yeah, I'll, just, I'll shut up. Thank you, Ms. Ha. I think that was very valuable input. Um, Ms. Ferreira and then Ms. Owen. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, we definitely need to kind of keep thinking through, you know, what Ms. Pat just brought, brought up because, you know, to, to really think through like how all of the inner workings of the town and, and how everything, um, how we can monitor and make sure that true inclusivity is, is happening. Um, so that's something definitely that, you know, we need to, we need to talk again about. Um, but I guess I wanted to kind of go back to what um, Alicia had said about, um, you know, ideas for strategy, I guess, just to kind of finish that conversation so we can move on to some of these other things in terms of what Ms. Pat brought and obviously the, the second part of our charge is, um, you know, we're going to do the press release, we're going to still send something also to the town council. I think it wouldn't be a bad thing for us to kind of like, you know, meet, you know, like maybe, you know, meet with the uh, town uh, council members before their vote, you know, and, and, and talk to them. Um, I don't know how we want to do that or how we can do that. Maybe we can ask Mr. Bachman in terms of obviously we don't want to make sure, you know, we don't want to have a quorum or whatever, but how we can go about doing that. Cause I think that might be a, a good idea um, to kind of reach out to the uh, town members individually and discuss with them, you know, in, in specificity, um, the details of, of, of what we recommended before they, they do the vote on the 21st. Um, and then I forgot what were some of the other things. I know you said an op-ed and all of that. I mean, we could do that after the press release. I think we wanna keep it in their minds until the vote on the 21st. You know, I think that would be, you know, my, my kind of say in regards to it. But Mr. Balkerman, is there any advice you can give us in terms of like talking with the town council members? Yeah, so I think, you know, talking to individual council members, I think, is a really good strategy, uh, because I think 
Um, I mean, email campaigns are one thing, but I think having one-on-one -on -one conversations with people is, it's just more interactive and allows counselors to give you feedback directly. Um, I think it's, you could request meetings. I'm not sure if many counselors are actually meeting people in person at this point in time, um, but I think, you know, there's 13 counselors. You could divvy up the names and each calls a few and talk to them about what, where they stand, what you're thinking. And that's their, that's their job is to listen. Thank you for that. I've and, also had people, oh, I'm sorry. And I think we, I think their numbers are on the website, their phone numbers or else, if not, we can help you with that. Or you can just email them and say, we'd like a meeting or time to talk. Thank you, Mr. Bachelman. Um, I would be happy to help and assist setting that up too. Um, I would be happy to send out emails, but um, so I think we have options on how we would like to reach out to them. We can divvy up the names. I think that's a good suggestion or um, we can have, I don't know if there's any other ways that you would want to do it. If everybody's interested in calling people or if you would like, Ms. Pat. So I've also had people reach out to me and say, is there anything else they can do for CSWG? I think this is the time for us to reach out to our networks, um, people with influence in this town to please, you know, reach out to the, um, to the counselors and, you know, advocate on our behalf of what we've put, put out as well. Like, you know, calling the counselors uh, personally, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Bachelman. So, but you need to understand that um, the council can't increase the budget. They can only cut the budget. So mm -hmm. as you start to think about what the request is to the council, understand what, 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 the, what the realm of requests are. Um, if you like the mo motion made by the finance committee, you could say, we want you to support that motion, um, that type of thing. I mean, they, they can take other motions like, they, like the finance committee has recommended. So that's just within their realm as well. Thank you. Ms. Bowman. Sorry. Um, can they, can the, can they reject um, the budget as a whole? Or in parts? Yeah, so I, I'm a co-host, so I can't raise my hand electronically. So I'll just raise my hand physically. Um, so yes, they can reject the budget but they have to pass a budget by June 30th. What happens if they don't pass it by June 30th? Um, the we don't have money to spend for anything. And if I, sorry, if I might also add to that, Ms. Um, Bowman, I think last year, um, because there was a lot of discrepancy on the budget that they did something, what they did was pass a temporary budget. So they passed a one month budget to give them more time to discuss um, the budget at hand. And I think that's actually where, where we came from. Um, but they request the, the way they got an extension in time was by passing a temporary budget. So I think that that's also, um, something to think about. Um, Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, because for me, I mean, I guess that's like for Mr. Bachman in terms of what like Ms. Bowman was saying, I, I want to go down the same route, Mr. Bachman, which is to ask, okay, you already told me that obviously they can increase it, they can slash it. So so what are all the options? I guess what what is it, like you said, we would we, be voting to for them to adopt the motion that the finance committee, because at least that's the, the, the biggest, right, amount of positions was the one that the budget, the finance committee um, recommended to, to date at least that was it. So I guess what are our options? Because yeah, also I don't wanna go talk to them to waste my time too, if it's, a, if it's gonna be a waste of time. What, what are the options? Because you know, my goal still is for us to have those recommendations in place that we made and to you know, have the sufficient budget. So then where, where does that leave us, I guess? So where it leaves us is the budget that I presented to the council that was revised on last Thursday. So that's what's on the table. Mm -hmm. uh, they can, and they voted that motion, which uh, to add, to have eight people working in 
the community responder program, but they did not, they are not able to increase the funds for that function. So uh, you, I think you are all aware that the uh, Senator Comerford has secured $90,000 in the state budget uh, that will help, that, that could um, fund two positions for the rest of that fiscal year, basically. So, and I think what the council is think, thinking is that, can we get a little bit farther than that? Thank you, Mr. Bachelman, Ms. Ferreira, and then Ms. So, so basically you can kind of move around funds like what you were trying to do before in terms of like moving funding from the kind of, um, from the economic development position to the DEI position, that sort of thing. Is that what the options are? Well, those both of those positions are in the town manager's budget line. So the economic development director is in the town manager's office under our, my budget line item and the, the DEI officer would also be in that budget line as well. So that's sort of a, just a swap for positions. We just took out, the position is still there, but it's not funded for the economic development director. We're creating the new position for DEI director or officer, whatever we're calling it. And then Ms. Ferrer, I don't know if this is helpful, but I think, so at this point, Mr. Bachelman has proposed a budget, um, the one that we saw on Thursday at the finance committee meeting, and that's the budget that is going to the town council as proposed. So I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think they can suggest any other swaps like that at this point. Um, that they, I, I don't know what our full spectrum of options are, but they can reject the budget, they can request a new budget, but I don't think they can say specifically they want this position swapped with this position. I don't think it's like a specificity that they can decide. Um, Ms. Pat, did you have something you also wanted to say? Sure. I meant to say this much earlier, but I was having internet issue at my home. Um, so thank uh, the town manager for listening in to us because I remember raising the concern around why do we need economic development director? Because I think it benefits, you know, bid landlords and, you know, landowners. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, I also thank you for um, finding money for the DEI director. And it seems like uh, you already created position for the DEI coordinator. Is that my understanding? I'm willing to support that. Um, so, and then there is the um, administrative assistant, correct? In that budget. So you have the DEI director, DEI coordinator. Is there an uh, administrative assistant or no? No, okay. No. So those two, okay. Okay. And then uh, I don't know if you're, you guys already discussed this, but please help me understand even with the eight responders in terms of 24 seven programming pilot program, how, you know, I'm still scratching my head. I have, a lot of, I have a lot of experience in program development. I know a lot of people know me as the, you know, somebody who used to run restaurant, but I'm more than that. I used to, you know, work in nonprofit um, world and I have developed programs from ground up, particularly 24 seven is one of my specialty. Done it, been there, done it. So I'm still scratching my head, um, Mr. Buckman, how even with eight responders will cover 24 uh, seven shift. Help me. I don't have an answer for you. I mean, we're again, just, we have just, just starting to think this through and the okay. council hasn't even voted the budget yet. So, um, but we want to be um, I, I literally want to contract with LEAP to get them in and right now to get that work started that they have to do because it'll take some time for them to do a pretty detailed analysis. And I like that they've done it before and that the working group was, you know, had recommended their work. And so I want to get them in now and I, it's going to take, some, take, I'm not sure how long it's going to take them, but um, in terms of all the details, there's a million details to work out on this program. That's why it's going to take some time. Um, so. I'm raising my hand again. 
Thank you, Miss Pat. Is it okay. the same so question? Another thing is, I believe I overheard the um, finance director stating that um, the town will be reaching out to some nonprofit organizations in terms of salary scale. I just want to put it out right now that um, let it put it, let me put it this way: the town will be potential competitors to some of the qualified candidates that might be interested in working for, you know, in CREST program. And nonprofit world is notoriously known that they don't pay well. So I was highly concerned on Thursday, uh, was it Thursday at finance committee? where it was mentioned, we should not be comparing salary from nonprofit world. Let me tell you, there are some folks who work in group homes and in mental health that are making minimum wage when they should be making way more. People who make good money in nonprofit and mental health are the clinician, the psychologist, the psychiatrist, you know, the registered nurses, I mean, this feels, I know what I'm talking about. So we should not compare the salary with what uh, the town plans to, to pay responders. Otherwise, you know what is going to happen? We're going to have a lot of turnover. We need, we need to be paying comparably, comparable salary that we pay the police officers is what we should be looking at, please. Nobody can live on 20 something thousand dollars a year or less than 20,000 a year. Please don't do that. And since we're pushing to have more BIPOC candidates, you know, this is the time for the town to really shine and say that they actually paying people comparably to what they're paying other town employees. I cannot stress this enough. If there is there anywhere I can be part of the discussion on salary scaling, I would love to be part of that because this is my background, part of my background. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, Ms. Owen. Yeah, so I have a question for Mr. Bockelman. I'm wondering what needs to happen for the CSWG to continue our work. I know that our charge ends in September, but I think the points that Ms. Pat brought up were really important. And I also think through serving on this group, we've become a liaison to the community because community safety is such an intersectional issue. So we're not just talking about alternative responders, but we're talking about translation services, housing, education, all these different things. So I would like to see the group continue. But as far as that goes, um, how, how would that be reconsidered? Are we convincing you? Are we convincing the town council? Yeah, so I think th th that's an important conversation to have. You, you have done really incredible work and I do compliment you. Um, I, I look back to where we were a year ago and um, it's remarkable. The progress that the town has made in a relatively short period of time generated by your efforts. So I just wanna recognize that. Um, you know, what's the next, what you know, I think the next conversation you're going to have is the is the is the next one, and then we have that the conversation after that. The next one is about what about the um, the oversight resident oversight group, whatever we're calling that group, uh, and let's look what that looks like and what that charges, and then let's look at what else needs to happen. And and I think we just look at it sequentially. Um, I mean, I think there's a lot of um, you all have built up a lot of um, uh, credibility and knowledge in the town that we'd love to continue to engage with. And, and somewhat it'll be decided, you will decide some in terms of what you wanna to continue to contribute at what level um, for the town. Some people might be ready to do something else and others might say, yes, I'm, I'm fired up and ready to do more. But I think the, the next thing is to focus on the, the next part of the charge. Thank you, Mr. Bachelman. Mrs. Pat. Thank you for your comment, uh, Mr. Bachman. So. One of the things that got me really excited um, recently was I was cruising the website, the town website. And to my surprise, surprise, good one. I saw the um, 
technology and translation. And even surprising to me pleasantly is the, the fact that my native language, Igbo, is in there. Three languages of Nigerian languages. I could, I was beside myself. I was very proud of the town. Thank did, you. I just want to acknowledge that. Did I it work? That, I say that I'm not advertising for anything. I say that because I translate um, services in my language. There are some areas in this country where you have cluster of people from my tribe and you know they are in the school system and according to the law, you know, um, sometimes they need translation. And so I, I, I provide that. So just to see something on Amos website and saw my language included, I was like, now we're talking. And nobody knows that, not many people know that. So that would be the work of like, you know, the BIPOC Affairs Commission. And I said, yeah, we're seeing some progress, you know. Um, I'm pretty sure, you know, there are people in this town that, you know, I saw so many languages actually, but I was able to, you know, tap into my own. I saw the translation right. I mean, the technology is wonderful. It was, you know, I wanted to test it and it worked. Perfect. Thank you. I just wanted to say that. Thank you. And Ms. Bowman, I'm not sure if your hand is still up um, or if it was raised from before or um, Ms. Ferreira, if you had your hand up. Okay, so Ms. Bowman's not going to go then? No, her, I think her hand was still oh, I, I left my hand up from before. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, yeah, so for me, it's just to kind of like, you know, you know, I know that we've been kind of on this, but I want to make sure that we are all on the same page in terms of what we're going to be doing around the, the first part before we move to the, to the second part. So Mr. Bachman, I want to make sure that that we're on the same page. I know you had your, your budget that you presented to the finance committee, which kind of upped, you know, some of what was in the, the what we had recommended for the CREST program. And then you, you did the budget for the director of the diversity, equity, inclusion, and then a coordinator, right? So those two. And then you had said four positions, right, for, for the for, for Crest, which obviously uh, we didn't think was nearly enough. Um, but now the finance committee has said eight positions. Do you know what those eight positions are? Is it like one director, one dispatcher, dispatcher, and then four responders? I guess I, I don't have. I believe it intended, it was intended to have eight responders, but I would need to look at the motion. So eight responders and- I believe what? that. I just, um, so what happens to the director? I mean, who's going to be directing the responders, I guess. So that's where I'm confused. Then. Yeah. yeah I, it, it says eight to fill eight community responder positions and the other elements of the program is proposed. So that means then what you had recommended in terms of director would still stay in place. It would be a director plus the eight responders then. Am I? I think that's what we budgeted in there. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it'd be eight. But okay. Yeah, so that's what their recommendation, their request is. That, that's their re request. Right. That's what the finance committee's recommendation to the to the town council is. Okay. So I guess my next question then for the group would be, since the only other options would be that they reject or they are they um, you know they reject the budget or they try to say for a new budget or whatever, which you know I don't know how feasible that is. I mean, I guess my thing would be what would be our next steps? Would our next steps be then for us to make sure that we reach out at the town council? I mean, I still think we need to do our press release as is, you know, and and send to the town council what we had sent before in terms, you know, like our press release is describing what our, our recommendation was in more detail. But I'm saying in terms of contacting the town members, what are we going to be contacting them about? You know, is it to say, hey, adopt what the finance committee said? What what are we? Yeah. So that's where we need to kind of be on the same page. So what is it so that we, we, we can, move, you know. Yeah, Miss Pat. 
So basically we can, you know, if we contact them, we just need to let them know that we would like them to reject the budget, our, our budget, you know, line item to, to reject that and have the town manager, you know, go back and redo it. I think it's what it, the only option we have right now. I do have a question to the town manager again. I've been thinking about this. So you had recommended four responders, right? Originally, yeah. did that include the uh, administrators, uh, the, um, the, uh, the director and the coordinator? No, we, I think that we had that in addition to. In addition, so if I'm, if I'm and I haven't read the, the motion yet, so if you are if you recommended four responders and um, uh, the finance committee recommended eight additional, is that am I reading that correctly? So it will be twelve responders. No, no. Total, total of eight. Total. So total is the key. Okay, gotcha. I wanted to make sure. So I, okay. I mean, I, let me just double check the language of the motion okay. again. Because when you read it, I was thinking, oh, twelve eight. responders. No, eight. They said eight community responder positions. In addition to the one, is it clear in the motion that it's an addition to what you have proposed? What they say um, and the other elements of the program as proposed. And it says and, so that's mm -hmm. in addition. To me, it's sounding like, you know, it's 12 responders. No? No, no, yeah. I think it, it was okay. clear it was eight responders plus the other elements, the DEI and all that other stuff that was put, oh, put in the presentation. Okay. okay. I got well, but I thought you said also it would include the director then. Right. I think that was also as one of the, under the other elements of the program. Yeah. So it would be a director for CRESS and then the DEI and coordinator, right? So those would be the positions. Right. That's department. what they that's what they've requested. That's what they're recommending. Yeah. Got it. So altogether 10 employees. Is that correct? Right. But I should be clear that that's what their request is, and that's oh, right. what my my mission is. They want me to come back to them by January with a re, with what what do you propose? What what's the program going to look like? And again, there's so many details of this to work out that we need to really dig into it. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't get fixated on the number so much, except that you know what I heard from the um, working group was that you wanted this program to be town employees not contracted out and i think that's mm -hmm. something we still want to talk about because you know the cahoots program is contracted out but there are pluses and minuses to both uh, or is contracting out as you know there's a million things to talk about all these things and then the second is um 24 7 coverage and that's another sometimes some of the programs aren't 24 7 but i think the sense it just make sure i understand what you're saying your sense is that if we don't ramp it up right away to 24 7 people aren't it's, it's you're you're sort of setting it up to fail and we're not looking at this, we're looking at this as an implementation program. How do we get this program up and running and implemented uh, for success? And we're really not looking to have it fail or, or be diminished or anything like that because across the board, we have, we're supportive of this and think it can really serve the town. And, and people are thinking, coming up with new ideas all the time. So it's really an exciting time, ways to problem solve. Thank you, Ms. Bowman and then Ms. Pat. So I actually totally forgot what I was gonna ask. So if I remember it, I'll come back to it, but my bad, I just, it just slipped my mind. No worries, thank you, Ms. Bowman, Ms. Pat. So just a um, couple comments and then question. So, um, with the implementation, it looks like it will be next year. Is there a plan to, you know, hire the CREST director right away this summer? So participate, to, to be part of the planning process. So I, we haven't even had that conversation yet about the timing. I think the first thing we want to do is look at a timeline and the milestones that we want to hit so that we we don't want to get to October, November and say, oh, we forgot to do that. We want to get a plan laid out and where does everything, where does everything fit into the plan? Mm -hmm. So I can't say yes or no to that. Yeah, because my suggestion would be, it would be really, really nice to have the director on board. Mm -hmm. I understand so that, that yeah. you, you can get significant input from that director and help with the 
hiring of his or her own staff. I mean, at least that's how they've done it in nonprofit world. That's one thing to, to keep in mind. So with the DEI director, when are you hoping to get somebody on board? Is it the summer? So that program will have money available at available to it July 1 if the council approves the budget. Um, so they will vote on the budget on June 21st. And I'll know for sure if they've approved the budget or not by then. Uh, we will do a job description and start to, to recruitment. I think this will be a, a um, hopefully we'll get great candidates, but I think it's a recruitment. It's not just putting an ad in the paper. We want to find people who are good, uh, who can be good applicants um, for that job. And it would be very critical that the town advertise to outlets that actually target people of color. Yeah, so, and I, know, think I don't know the history. I don't know what, you know, where, you know, the town recruits beside the website or even indeed beside those, you know, there are some networks that, you know, the town could advertise to mm -hmm. attract, um, you know, highly qualified uh, BIPOC candidates, something to keep in mind. Yeah, so Ms. Moyston works in the HR department as well, and she d has expanded the scope of how the HR department has reached out. And, and along those lines, I would like to, I will be reaching out to Ms. Ferreira to get her experience because I know that these pro these positions can be set up to succeed or fail. And I wanna make sure that this these, this is an important position for the town and that we, it, it's not a, we want to succeed. That's right, that's right. And in order for it to succeed, also is to have enough resources to carry uh, you know, the, the duties, the job. And so I'm assuming that would be enough funding in the department because the 90K is for the salary, but you know, there are other things that come with it. You know, so I'm, I'm assuming you know, that it you know, will be included in the budget or, or somewhere. Because if we just hire a director and that's it and said you know that's it you know it's not going to work out it will not work out so this brings me to the position of recreational director so where is the town at at this and what is the town doing to attract BIPOC folks because i very much like to have BIPOC candidate um the opportunity to apply as well. So is this like the, is the recreation director like L L L S S C director? Like the same level, like human, human, human resource director, like the uh, APD chief, like the um, public works director. Definitely we should really, really think about attracting qualified BIPOC. That's what I'm talking about in terms of equity and influence and you know, power. We need somebody, you know, I'm hoping we'll get to our three BIPOC folks in directorship position in this town, you know, so that we can start leveling the playing field. Um, so what is the town, what are we with the um, hiring process with that position? Um, I know they're getting ready to interview. Um, I mean, I can talk, this is not exactly a topic for this committee, but I can, I'm happy to talk with you at another time, uh, Ms. Pat. Um, but where we are, I think the, uh, and Ms. Moisten may know better than I, I know that we've had applicants. I know there's a, they're getting ready to do interviews. Um, I'm not sure where else it is on that. It's working its way through the process. Um, Ms. Moisten, if you want to offer some response to Mrs. Pat as well? Um, so it has been harder for us from the HR perspective to reach out to the different networks. So any networks that individuals have is great. I mean, I, I often do a lot of like recruiting for people that I just know in the communities, trying to get them to apply. Our affirmative action um, policy requires that we have to interview anyone who applies for any position that is um, that is identified as a person from an underrepresented group or BIPOC community member or other marginalized community member. So, so 
Thank you for sharing that. So that's part of what I'm thinking about the new committee, like that BIPOC Affairs Commission, you know, like when positions of power comes up, you know, how many people of color applied, you know, um, and, you know, did any of them get hired or not, you know, tracking things like that. Because right now, I don't know anything about that in this town. All I know is we have mostly white folks in power of positions that have little or nothing to understand our experiences as people of color. Yeah. Yes, Ms. Moisted. I just real quick, because I know Tashina and Brianna have their hands up as well. But I also want to say, you know, one of the things that is is the struggle. So first of all, I think a lot of people um, between councils and our personnel board and the town manager are striving for us to diversify our staff at all levels, right? Because it's really not a reflection of what you see outside um, when you walk outside of town hall. And I will say that we do, but there's like a, a lot of cultural changes that need to happen that exceed, I don't want to say exceed race, but there's just, there, you know, there's things that need to happen here in order for us to be able to retain individuals from different backgrounds that, that are being worked on as well. And so it, you know, it might have to all roll out kind of at the same time in order to get it done, but those efforts are being thought of now and, and will be pursued. Thank you, Ms. Moisen. Um, Ms. Bowman and then Ms. Owen. So I really agree with Ms. Moisen. That was actually where I was going to go with this is that, um, you know, they've done in this, in this community, there has been um, hiring efforts to get um, people in, people of color, people of color, Lord, I'm like, people of color in particular into the school system and on average, it lasts about two years, okay? We have a few exceptions to the rule, um, but in average, they kind of, especially if they're coming from outside of this community, they only last about two years. We have to figure out, like, if we're gonna, if we're gonna really push to have BIPOC people recruited into these positions, then we really need to have something set up to offer support. Um, because, you know, I've had a few conversations with some of the people who have been administrators, teachers, so on and so forth, who are like, no, nah, I'm leaving because I don't have any, I don't have any support. I'm the only one. I don't have any support. I'm out of here. I'm not going to continue doing this. This is ridiculous. You know, anytime I make a grievance, anytime I make a blah, 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 like, like there was one particular person that was a principal and I had absolutely no problem with him. I got along with him, no problem, but every white teacher, every white parent had an issue with him because he would call them on their BS. We need to know that there's administration, there's people backing that person so that they don't feel isolated and alone. And that is one of the biggest issues as to why we don't maintain having people of color working in government and working in our school systems and so on and so forth because we they don't have support <clears throat> so that that being said one of the things that i was thinking is that you know just as far as ideas for recruitment is looking at the um hbcus Looking at the HBCUs and trying to recruit people coming in from those locations, looking at people like, because I think you're going to really ultimately have a very hard time trying to pull um, people from other communities where they're working with other people of colors in their communities. Because I think what's going to happen is we're going to get them and they're going to go right back because they're going to be like, absolutely not. Because that's what Amherst does. Absolutely not. When people of color come into this community who have not been here before, they enter this community, they have hopes and dreams because, you know, the non BIPOC community sings a great song, but when the reality comes and the, and, and the it hits the fan, they absolutely do not back these people. And these people, up and leave. They go back to their communities where they are working in more of a safe environment. 
Amherst is not a safe environment. And until we really approach Amherst as being a, as being a non-safe environment for BIPOC community, which means we are setting up situations that like we're setting up um, boards or whatever to support BIPOC people within the community who are administrators, who are, who are people who are working in government, who are people who are working in, you know, whatever they're doing that has to do, you know, a place of exposure, a place where they're in, in charge of non-BIPOC people, they need a place where they feel safe. They need to be able to turn around and be like, this is what I'm trying to implement. This is why I'm trying to implement it. And this is the pushback that I'm getting. Can you get your people and get them on board? They need that. They need that support. And so I'm going to say right now that until, like, that's part of the big picture. Like, you have to get that. That has to be part of this when, as you're, like, looking at creating a system. Thank you, Ms. Bowman. Ms. Owen? Yeah, for me, um, Mr. Bachman, I'm wondering if you can provide more clarity around um, crest responders being compare, being paid um, salary ranges in comparison with nonprofits. I think that's a really dangerous idea with implementing this program. For perspective, I'm a director at a nonprofit and I work two jobs and I worked three over the pandemic. So I don't think that's going to retain staff for crest. And also, I think um, just after investigating the APD, the different officers' salaries, it's a little bit disappointing because we're asking them to do similar things. We have not set salaries or job descriptions for any of the positions that all has all that work has to be done. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bachman. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Um, okay, just in light of the time, I wanted to double back if possible to the question of whether or not we're looking to request an extension for the second part of our charge. Um, so it looks like our second report is due June 30th, which is at the end of this month. Um, I don't know if an extension is possible, but I'm just wondering if that is what we're interested in as a group right now, and if we would like to have that discussion with Mr. Bockelman since he is available. Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I definitely want to have that discussion with Mr. Bachman to see about an extension of the charge and whether there's any budget to get anyone to help us out or whether we'd have to do this on our own because there is no budget. Um, I want to get more clarity on that. So, yeah, the, the deadline is important because we want to keep this project moving. Uh, there are three more meetings for if you're meeting weekly, there are three more meetings. So, I mean, I would suggest, uh, I would, just my opinion would be to go at it and go see how far you get on the next couple meetings and see if then if, if we need ex additional time, we can talk about that. Um, you know, you know, we don't have fun, the funds for the, the $80,000 is, is expended. We have dedicated the last $12,000 I think we had to par partially to the core equity team and partially to the reparations for Amherst Group. Thank you, Mr. Bachelman. Um, Ms. Ferreira and then Mrs. Pat. Okay, so, all right, that's clear. We don't have further funding. I guess the other thing though you didn't mention was I thought we were gonna be paying some gift cards to people that had done the surveys and had spoken at the two forums. Did we do that? Th that's not... That so is there funding for that though? I wanna make sure we have funding for that because we have to be our word. Um, I think that was included in the um, contract with the seven gen group. That was mm -hmm. the way we were able to do that. We can't give, the town can't give gift cards to people. Um, that's not allowed, but I think if we, I think the deal was we were gonna contract with the seven gen group and they were gonna be able to process it that way. Oh. Well, yeah, I guess I'm not clear on that. So you're saying that folks that, that went to the forum, the two forums and, and did the surveys, they were gonna get the gift cards through 7th Gen? I, I don't, when Ms. Ms. Moisten had to step away when she comes back, she may know more about that, but um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure where that stood, honestly. Thank you, Mr. Buckleman. Ms. Pat and then Ms. Bowman. 
Okay, so actually myself and Alicia and Ms. Marston were subcommittee on gift, uh, uh, gift card. And I think what we had proposed to CSWG is to, to get the, um, to work collaboratively with um, the uh, Chamber of Commerce, something like that, because Ms. Marston had told us that the town don't purchase gift card. Uh, and so that's what I think we're supposed to be doing. So I'm hoping we have a little bit of money, at least the 1,000 to cover, to cover the people we promised we were going to give $25 gift cards. I hope we, we have some money for that. My second thing is if we don't have, and I'm switching topic, if we don't have budget for this uh, fiscal year, to do the part B, it, would there be money in 2022 fiscal year if we need help to complete part B? Because the way I'm looking at it, I just want us, I don't want us to rush it. I mean, we, we'll meet every week, we'll do, you know, um, subcommittee, but I don't think we can pull it off end of June. And then July comes new fiscal year, there should be money you know, if we need help to do a thorough job, because um, I have a lot to say about, you know, how to reform uh, the police, especially with traffic stop and, you know, all that process stuff. So um, I just want us to make sure that we do a very good job that we'll present to the town manager and to the town council. So, I'm pleading that we'll, we'll probably need help to get the work done uh, by September. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Ms. Bowman? Yeah, so what I, I kind of agree with Ms. Pat because like what I, what I don't understand is that we're supposed to be going until September, right? But, so I feel like, I don't know, I feel like there should have been money put in the budget for us to continue our charge um, through September. Um, I don't know, I just, I'm, I'm like, again, like I'm in a place of feeling frustrated and defeated and duped and like, I just, I feel like, like the town says a lot of words and they don't mean any of it. Um, and it's kind of exhausting. It's kind of exhausting. Like, I want to be, I want to participate in this and I want to be part of change in this community. But I feel like what ends up happening, just like the people who leave after two years, it's like, everything's a fight. Everything's a challenge. Everything's a, um, an argument and, and you know, I don't know. I just, it's, it's really disappointing. It's really, really disappointing. And I want better for the community that I've been in for 30 years. And I just, I don't know. I just, I really just think that like, it's just, here we go again. I really do feel like it. it's here we go again. We're doing this over again. We've done this 15 plus years of, you know, hey, we're going to do this thing. And then after about a year, it just dwindles out and goes away. Um, It's sad, it's 
really, really frustrating. And like I said, very disappointing. And I'm very like, just shame on this town. This shame, shame, shame on this town. I just hope that like, I just hope that like, people like the non-BIPOC people can really like, really feel shame. I really do, because I just, I'm, every single wall that could be come up is coming up, you know, and, you know, we're trying to implement something that's good for the whole community. We're like not even thinking about just ourselves, we're thinking about the community as a whole, and we're still being stepped on, and that's so frustrating, and I really, really, really hope that I'm misinterpreting the situation, but my gut says I'm not. My gut says in six months, this is gonna be just another whim, you know, in the back of the minds of the non-BIPOC people of this community. Thank you, Ms. Bowman, Ms. Pat. So, uh, Tashina, thank you for saying this so, eloquently. And that's what I've been observing this town. When it comes to BIPOC affairs, it's nickel and diamond us. Let's call it spade a spade. Let's call it out, okay? Seven gen with highly qualified, overqualified um, company only charged us 60K only. I challenge people in this town to go do their research and find out what it actually cost to do the work that it did for us. They went above and beyond. And yet some town councilors had to question the amount being paid. At the same time, nobody heard the same similar amount of money that went to the business community. I'm a businesswoman, okay? I am not anti-business but nothing was said about similar project to revitalize downtown, to you know, bring back uh, commerce in Ames town. Actually, that contract was actually conquered out, not to, it wouldn't benefit um, whoever the consultant was. The point is, we don't matter in this town. Nobody should be surprised about it. We have budgeted more than $100,000 to fix MS Common. Are you kidding me? When we're telling people how we're being harassed by police, when we're not benefiting from all the money that is rolling in in this town, and then we have to beg to get additional help in this Part B uh, uh, project, I mean, that's why we need more people to be speaking up, to be, you know, pointing things out. I did that with special education as a co-chair, co-president for CPAC, and I was very successful. We were able to expose corruption. We were able to expose some uh, educators whose license expired we were able to expose people who were not qualified for their positions of authority because I had to request for um, public records. We posted everything on CPAC website. Okay, that's my contribution in this town. We need to follow the money. We need equity. I, I can't come up with another name, but that word is overused. And if this group is saying we need additional money to complete our, our budget, I get irritated when excuses come because I'm 100% sure we have the money. We have reserve. Yes, we want to get good you know, rating if we go to borrow money. Borrow money to benefit who? Okay, to benefit who? Who is getting contracts in this town? Who are getting the, you know, we're going to have a lot of uh, um, building uh, projects. 
I'll be following the money. Who will win the contracts? The contractors, are they actually, you know, hiring people of color to benefit from the money that will come out of, you know, doing some of this construction? I am geared up to be calling it out, exposing it, and I have nothing to lose. I have nothing to lose. I survived Baku, Baku restaurant when I was calling things out with special education. I'm in Hadley now. Even if I'm still in Amherst doing business, I have no problem calling it out. You know, um, we're just tired. And I agree with Tashina, she's right. We're being stepped on and that's not okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat, Ms. Ferreira and then Ms. Bowman. Yeah, um, yeah, and I guess this is for Mr. Bachelman, um, and and you've heard from Ms. Bowman and, and from Ms. Pat. You know, I think for me, it, it has to be like we need to figure out an extension. It can't be like okay, you all need to go hard for the next three weeks. It's not going to get done. You know what I'm saying? So we need to figure out on okay, by when can we get the extension, Mr. Bachelman? Because that's basically it. We're not going to rush this. We can't get this done no. in in three in three weeks time. There's no way. So that's one. Two, we've you've heard from us. Is there a way to get more money? I mean, we can continue to do work, but given the new fiscal year, is there a way to get some additional funds to be able to hire a consultant group? Or oh, we already have an we already have, we already have. Uh, yeah, we already have a relationship with Seven Gen. Is yeah. there a way to kind of extend their contract or, or whatever the, the need be so that we can um, contract them to help us with this? <laughs> I guess, th th so those are my, my two questions. Um, and concretely, we need to figure this out. I guess that's the thing, not to say, well, there isn't anything. How can we figure this out? How can we make this happen? Yes, Mr. Bakovin. So I guess the question is, what is, what is the work plan? What is the need? Um, and what's the, what's the timeline you're requesting? So I haven't, if, I think it's a working group, you know, you know, how much more time are you looking for? Um, what are the what do you need consulting support for? I mean, we can't extend the seven gen contract. It's not that's that contract is terminated. Um, we we already did the RFP the IFB for that. Um, and and you know I think there isn't you know we've you know given that you know I think previously we had talked about we had twelve thousand dollars left, but we've reallocated that funding. Um, Assuming that you know, I assume that this this work was going to be done by the staff, the by the um by the working group. We can provide staff support to help you with some of this work. I mean, writing a charge is you know most of our committee charges are about two pages long, um, so we can certainly provide some samples of that. We can go to other communities and see what their charges look like in terms of creating a resident oversight committee. We can do some of that legwork for you, so you don't have to do that. Um, and then I guess, I'm not sure what other things that you want to, to take on. Um, yes, Ms. Bowman, did you have your hand up? Uh, yeah. Um, the other question that I had that I feel like, excuse me, never got answered. And then I guess it's for you, Mr. Buckelman. So, so let's, when an officer retires, right, they're at one pay bracket, right? But when an officer comes in, they're at a lower pay bracket. Mm -hmm. so what happens to that money in between? Because obviously you were paying more to one, and now you're paying less to the new one. So what's going on with that money in between that? In be you, what's going on with the difference between the one who retired and the one who um, is coming in new? So uh, under the towns, you know, when when there's savings in the town's budgets, for, for, that would be called a savings. Um, that money gets returned to the town. It goes into our um, free cash, and then that gets reallocated as needed to whatever you know the budget requires. That's interesting. Um, thank you, Miss Owen. 
Um, Mr. Bachman, to answer your question on like what we would need uh, consultants for, I think that the second part of the charge confuses me a little bit okay. because obviously it's written as if it's geared toward resident oversight, but also exploring the structures of the police department. I would want to know more about um, the APD being an accredited <laughs> agency and learning more about what control we do have over policies and procedures because again in the forums and in the surveys we did review really horrific stories that um, I would say warrant us to investigate those policies and procedures that could change but also I'm not sure how much jurisdiction we have over that given that the APD is an accredited agency. Oh, so, so that's it. So my interpretation was that the resident oversight group was going to do that work. That's that you're going to set the charge, and then they were you're going to say go look at all their policies, and that they were going to do whoever was on it on that resident oversight group was going to take on that task of examining um, the work. Um, I want to call on Ms. Ferrer and then Mrs. Pat, but if I could just really quickly read the. Um, just the second part of our charge okay. it is to make recommendations on reforms to the current organizational and oversight structures of the Amherst Police Department. And then it specifies later by exploring models of resident oversight of police departments and recommending reforms to the current organizational and oversight structures. Um, thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Alicia, for, for, for saying that, because that's exactly what I was going to ask was for the charge to be read, because the, our charge was not just to recommend the oversight board. The only thing, the only reason why we recommended the re resident oversight board was because we know that, of okay. course, it would be a uh, yeah, budget. There was going to be a chunk, chunk of money that was going to be needed for that. But this reforms, this is around reforms. There's so much that we need to, to talk about in regards yeah. to reforming the, the police, the APD. I mean, you know, residents aren't happy in general, and then specifically BIPOC residents are unhappy with, with the performance of the APD. We need to look at the diversity. We need to look at the structure. We need to look at what they've been doing all these years. We need to look at their hiring. We need to look at supervision. We need to look at the officers and what they do. We need to look at this community, um, you know, uh, policing that they do. We, it, there's, there's a gazillion amount of things that we need to do in regards to actually and, and we need to look at all the research like we did for part A, right? In terms of what others have been doing around reforming the police structures. And one of the most pivotal parts, which is traffic violations, right? We need to look at what we're gonna be doing to reform the traffic stops that they put in place because that's the, the number one way that they profile people of color. So you asked me what do we need to do? Part B is a ginormous amount of money. And then you have the oversight board that we still need to define what more specifics in terms of what we want them to do. It's a ginormous task. It's not just a rush, rush, rush and do a charge for the oversight board. Oh, no, 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 no. We have a lot to say and we have a lot to research and we have a lot to put on paper in regards to recommendations for reform. Thank you, Ms. Ferrara. Ms. Pat and then Ms. Bowman. Okay, and I don't want to repeat what Ms. Ferrara just said. That's exactly what I wanted to say, but she even said it much better. In addition to that, okay, us researching and coming up with recommendation for the organization or the structure of APD, it will also be an opportunity to educate, raise awareness in our community because, you know, APD is a huge mystery. You know, knowledge is power. I'm hoping that our second charge will not only um, provide recommendations to reform it, and, but also to empower, to inform, especially BIPOC folks, how the APD system works, okay? So I'm seeing this as an educational component. I've lived, I've lived in this town for a long, long time. I've never run an office or any of that, but I will consider myself as somebody that is considered credible in this town. And people do, you know, reach out to me for all kinds of questions. I may not be in any committee, I may not be very articulate, but people do come for me for wisdom to, 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 to check, you know, where I am on different issues. And I think, 
People are anxious and ready to hear what our recommendation this, you know, beyond the site, the resident oversight board. So I see our work like really, really huge. I think we're going to, we should expect some, you know, public comments and it might be re-traumatizing some people. So I'm not seeing this as just, you know, one or two pages. We do respect to you, um, uh, Mr. Buckman, but we're talking about decades and decades of history of what bike work folks have, have been through in this town. We need to be very transparent, bring everything out here in the open, you know, because people deserve to know some things that have been like a mystery to them, it should not be. And I, I hope, you know, that's what you thought when you, when the committee that um, interviewed us that we're supposed to do. And so when I'm involved with something, I have to be very thorough. People know me for that, you know? And even with the police reform, I see it beyond that. Like Human Rights Commission will be part of what we'll be recommending for them to have more um, uh, power to implement, to do their work. These are very, you know, good people, intelligent people who could do the work better, but their hands are, are tied by being considered advisory. I think it should be beyond that. I have some ideas when we start, you know, discussing, because when I, when I hear about when I think about police reform, it goes just beyond police reform. People have to have outlet where they can say, I want to go to Human, uh, Human Rights Commission and I want solution. And not just, oh, this is personal issue, we're going to Human Resource. Yeah, we know all that, but the Human Rights Commission should have power. Just like planning board, that's the model most organizations should be. Planning board, they approve, or disapprove. They allow public to make comments, you know, abortors, uh, like, you know, homeowners can object to stuff, but, you know, they have a lot of power. I would like to see that the Human Rights Commission, I'd like to see that with BIPOC Affairs Commission. I'd like to see that in Resident Oversight Board. So when we're talking about equity, there's a lot that is involved. That's all I want to say. Thank you for that. Ms. Bowman, did you still have your hand up? No, okay. Um, Ms. Moisen? If I you do not have my hand up. Okay, thank you, Ms. Bowman. Um, Ms. Moisen? Um, so I feel like the second half of the charge, and I know like during the first, before we really started working on the first, or you guys started working on the first part of the charge, I sent you guys out recommendations. And I feel like the same thing applies here, where the recommendations you guys might be able to come up with and leave the, and send the, the exploring the models, the reviewing of policies and complaints and trainings and examining the different public safety, well, that part you've already done, but there are certain parts that I think that you guys might absolutely need to have another consultant come in and do, but just like I said, and I had recommended for you guys to do the recommendations on your own, which was what ended up happening. I think that you guys can still do these recommendations and then have the consultant do that other piece. Um, only because I say this because we already know, like if you walk into the police department, how you feel, or we like you already kind of have an idea of those things and, and maybe some of it would need some more investigation. And I'm not trying to say that you guys don't need a consultant, but um, I just think again, the recommendations in the same way that you guys had to do the first set of recommendations from the first part of the charge, you guys had, you did those on your own and you guys can probably do these. I feel like you guys can do these recommendations on your own, but you still need the consultants to do the remaining stuff, you know, to help you with those interlacing pieces of information and I'm not saying that to do the recommendations you don't have to do any background work because it absolutely needs to be done it's just a thank you <clears throat> thank you Ms. Moisten um, Ms. Ferreira yeah I mean I hear you uh, Ms. Moisten you know what you're saying but you know obviously we've been through a very 
trying and difficult process for that first part, uh, which I, I, I did not come out of, of that process very trusting. So for me to kind of think that I could just do recommendations that are empty, that don't have any backing with it, you know, from a consultant that's gone and done a bunch of research and stuff like that. Even with what we had from seventh gen, we were questioned up and down till this day. They, they, they basically don't even, you know, really even, um, you know, trust what seventh gen came up with. Never mind if we just walk in with like some recommendations based on just us, you know what I'm saying? So no, I, I don't trust that. We would have to, the same way we treated part A, we need to treat part B, right? We need to have forums. We need to make sure that people are, are, are able to chime in in terms of, of what they would want for the, because again, these are going to be police officers that are going to be in place right now, still at 43, 44, however many, right? So we need to make sure that, that you know, these recommendations are going to be applicable to them. And then as they get decreased, because hopefully that's what's going to happen to them, right? They're going to get decreased because the crest is going to be uh, taken over in terms of a lot of their work. But still, what whatever uh, police officers are remaining, these recommendations are going to be applicable to them. So my thing is, is that we need to treat this with the same veracity, the same importance, the same um, type of, um, you know, seriousness, that we took part A. This is not just a kind of like, oh, well, let's, let's just get this done really quickly and stuff like that. And I don't trust it, Ms. Poinson, I'm sorry. I don't trust the town to be, to just, for us to just do like, like what we were told by Mr. Bachman last time, just write up some recommendations and then, you know, send it in. And we did that. And then we got questioned up the wazoo about it. Well, you didn't put enough details. You didn't even include this and that in the third, you know? No, 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 you know? And so my other question is for Mr. Bachman in terms of, so in order for me to, to have an idea in terms of how much time I would need, right? I would need to know, okay, we're writing the recommendations to you, uh, Mr. Bachman, and then what happens? And then what, you're presenting it to the town council. Is there gonna be a series of meetings like there was for part A? I still need to know that, you know, so that I can know what the timeline is. Because as of right now, our charge is up September 1st. I would say we need the summer. You see what I'm saying? To get this done. It's not at the end of June. We need until August, you know, 15th or whatever, you know? I mean, you need to tell me by when you need the recommendations in, blah, blah, blah. But I know my charge ends September 1st. So I'll be giving you something before September 1st, right? But it, maybe it's the day before September 1st. I don't know. So you need to tell me what, what, what you know, what the deal. So I go back to how much money do we have to be able to hire someone to help us out? Or, you know, and let me put it there. And then I, I want you to, to, to answer my other questions. By when do you need the recommendations? Because then I could tell you how long we, we would have to do them. But it's not going to be June 30th because that's not feasible. No, it's not. Um, might I be able to just add a couple of questions on to Ms. Ferrer's questions before Mr. Bachelman answers? Just because I had a similar questions and I thought that the reason we were working off of June 30th was because we were hoping that these funds would be included in this fiscal budget and that we would want these things to be implemented right away when the fiscal budget was available but there aren't like the question of the funds available for this to be in place right away it, it's still a question mark like there was the 80k set aside for racial equity that could be used by the resident oversight board, but could be used by other things also. So there isn't like a set amount of money allocated for the resident oversight board. And so because of that, I think that kind of frees us of the deadline of it needing to happen by the 30th. I'm not sure if that's correct. So I, I still would like the same answers from Mr. Bockelman, but just like an interpretation of that would also be helpful. And then in terms of funding, I think there was also just the discussion of free cash um, and if that's something that we could use, like free cash or stuff in the budget that wasn't used, if that money would be available, I think we would have to like put in a request or I don't know what that process actually is. So um, so I think the best the best course is to say what what are you, what is the what what's the information we need? I'll say we because I feel that what, what's the information you need in order to develop the second part of the charge and to answer the questions that you have, and then lay out the timeline and the process. And I think you know as as you start to lay that out, and you know, I hear you saying we will need the summer to do that. 
uh, in order to finish it. Most of the recommendations, if I look at the things, they're non-monetary implementation things. It's like change this policy, change that policy. It could be something like that. Uh, so I don't think, I think that's why this was set up se separately because it didn't have budget implications in terms of the implementation of the recommendations that would come out of the setting up an oversight board or, or having changes of, of uh, use of force policies or whatever. So I think that that's, uh, that's why it wasn't tied to the budget necessarily. The first part we anticipated it would be tied to the budget. Um, you know, and, and I guess what would be important is to say, you know, I, I can't give you a number on what you don't build to, you say what, you're, what the need is, where you need help with this part of the, of the research or that part of the research. I think just to be um, clear about how, what that would look like and um, if there's if there are things that we can provide with existing staff and research that we can provide, we will. And if there's things that we need to go outside for support on, we'll, we can look at where we can get funds to do that. Um, and so I think you know, I think Ms. Walker pointed out to the eighty thousand dollars that that is in the budget for a next fiscal year, so that would become available on July one. Um, thank you, Mr. Bachelman. And Ms. Ferreira, just um, if you wanted to follow up to that question, I would like you to give you an opportunity to respond first. You can go, you can go to Ms. Pat and then- Okay, Ms. Pat. So, um, Mr. Bachman, when you say staff support, what does that exactly entails? Because the way I look at it, um, your employees are good people, but at the same time, I mean, they work for you. It would be different for an independent consultant to work with us. So I'm not saying that we will not, you know, we don't want, you know, support from your staff to do research for us. But you've heard a number of us saying that we don't trust the town. You know, can you at least understand that? Because this is, you know, we're talking about reforming police and then you want to offer some of your staff to help us if we need further research done. I can't speak for the rest of the committee members. I'm not going to trust the research outcome. It's just because of um, how is the best way to put it? It just um, I won't receive it as well as if it's coming from a, consult, a consultant that involves people of color, that they're not employed, currently employed by the town, that are independent, that they're free to, you know, point out, you know, what they found out, what is working other places, challenges people are getting into, as opposed to having what I call insider helping us out. And I'm speaking for myself right now. I can't speak for ev everybody else. So that's, you know, we received um, Jennifer very well because, you know, I can identify with her. You know, she's like, you know, I look at her like she, she could be my, you know, baby, baby sister, or even she can be my first daughter type of thing. So it's different when I, I look at her. And I look at you, Mr. Bachman, you're a very good man. But I can't help your white man, and um, you have a lot of power and influence because of your position. So that's how I always see you. You know, as much as you know, you come from very good place. You know, you do want to help, but my experience and your experience are very different. And so that's you know when we when we talk about. Um, when we when we when we talk about how we will you know our our vision for this town that's where we're coming from okay thank you um thank you Ms. Ferrer yes as a way to move forward I know that we had worked on uh we had uh draft RFP for the second part 
um, I, I think if you recall, we had already started doing that. But the thing is, is that we were like, well, we don't know if we're going to have enough money. But, but so I think that that could be a starting point, right? When you keep on asking us, well, what do you need the consultant for? We could start with that draft with, that we have put together. Now we can update it, right? Based on the fact that we've gone through part A and we've seen the intensity and, and, and the, the detail that we need to have in regards to our recommendations, we can update that, you know, but that would be a starting point at least for, to, to get that conversation going because yeah, I mean, you know, uh, yeah, uh, thank you. And obviously I, I'm thankful that we've had the support um, from your staff, like the other staff person too, that helped us with the first RS, RFP. It was very helpful. Very um, obviously, you know, Jennifer and yourself, Mr. Bachman. However, this is very specific, right? And as Ms. Pat said, we need a consultant group that has a specific expertise like 7Gen had and that are independent from the town so that then they also, they're independent from us, independent from the town. And so they bring a certain neutrality, but also a certain respect, right? And even given that, remember how questioned they were, you know? It, it, so never mind if it is someone that's tied to us or tied to you all or anything like that, then they won't be given any respect. So that's why we would need to get someone that's independent, but obviously that we all are in, in agreement with hiring so that they could assist us in doing this work. Thank you, Ms. Ferrer. Ms. Moyston. So I just wanted to go back because, I, and just say, particularly to Ms. Ferrer, I'm not saying that you guys don't need a consultant or that you need to do these blind, but when you go back and think about it, the first part of those recommendations, the seven gen hadn't submitted their recommendations, right? You guys came up with those off of the information or from the stuff that we did. And I, and I made it very clear when I said that you guys will have to do research and open forms or whatever that may be. Um, and, and part of them, how part of you guys been questioned so much is a because this is new b because it had large numbers c because people just don't believe that you know what i mean like the people didn't really understand th what you guys were saying to them like that bipoc people are treated differently like they they didn't they don't understand that so between high numbers not believing and just it being new they're going to question it to the umpth degree, which they would probably, I mean, maybe they won't do it so much with the second half because you guys have well-established, you guys have voice how you feel. I'm just saying that I don't know how much money is going to be given, but we all know that the consultants are expensive, right? And then there's a certain amount of this that can be done or started or whatever to relieve some of that work that the consultants have to do because it's, and, and I don't know what is in, you know, the $80,000 though, I thought was kind of for uh, resources for the, um, I'm so sorry, the resident it's advisory, not resident advisory, the resident oversight committee, maybe I'm wrong, I don't, but so we don't want to touch that $80,000 because you guys are going to want that to go there. And we know that if you hire a consultant to fill up that whole second part of the recommend, you know, the whole second part of your charge, that's going to be $75,000 plus, right? And that's going to be all of the money. So I, I'm just trying to offer, you know, some suggestions and how you guys can work with this at the same time and get the same results. And I'm not saying by far that you guys don't need a consultant because there's a lot of stuff in that second part of the charge. And it's equally as heavy as the first part. There's just no money piece to it necessarily, if that makes sense. So I just wanted to clarify and 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 state that, that's all. Can can I just respond real quick? Yes, Ms. Ferrer. I, I mean, I, I get that, um, Ms. Moyston, obviously that, uh, you know, I think, as you saw, you know, we're going to continue to do our independent work and coming up with the recommendations and things like that. But we do need that assistance in terms of the, the data, the research, and there's certain things that we can't do ourselves, even if we do the forums and everything that only, as we saw, only gets a certain, uh, um, you know, a certain group of people that have access to internet and so on and so forth, right? And even if we end up doing something in person at some point or whatever, that's still going to only get a certain uh, um, viewpoint from certain people. And we might, especially when reforming the police, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to want to talk to us, especially marginalized folks, while the folks that, that get impacted by police on a day-to-day -day basis, all right? So so we're going to need to, to have that type of, of, you know, back and forth with, with, uh, with, that, with that group too. Um, 
you know, my thing is that, again, I get it that all of this, this is new and things like that, but unfortunately, you know, we're not getting, we don't get the benefit of the doubt with this. You know what I'm saying? We have to be strong. We have to come thorough. We have to come detailed. We have to come focused um, with that type, this type of information, because when we were going through the first part, I felt there was a lot of like misinformation and a lot of it did come from, you know, the town and stuff like that, um, that we had to kind of circumvent or, or try to jump over and stuff like that. And so I don't want the same type of mistake. And lastly, I mean, again, we're jostling for money, right? So again, it's like, well, you know, again, it's kind of like trying to, to be divisive. Well, we gave some money to reparations. We gave some money for the equity group and stuff like that. Well, why isn't there money to these groups, period, point blank? Because these are the, the groups that are helping out the, this population, which again, as we know, is the population that's hurting. It's the population that gets the scraps, right? We always get the scraps. The BIPOC population gets the, the scraps, right? And, and I remember like when I was working at UMass and doing, you know, different work and everything like that. I remember when I would come across certain populations and I remember a lot of populations talking about, it's about the majority. It's not about the, the folks that are, you know, less in number and everything like that. And I never forget that, that no, it's not about the majority. It's about everybody, right? It's about everyone and seeing that folks that are more, you know, the, the numbers aren't as, as big as the majority, they're the ones that are always, as we, that's why we use the words marginalized and so on and so forth. And I'm not even talking it to you, Ms. Moisson. I'm talking it in general, right, to the town. That the town, you know, is, is never, um, you know, re ready to, to take ownership of that, to take responsibility of that, right? That it's only certain residents that, that get you know, the full effect of the town. They get the benefits of the town. <laughs> Others do not. And, and this thing about us now having to scrap for money for consultants is an example of that. I'm sorry, but this is it. This is it. This is we're, we're seeing it happen yet again <laughs> because we've had to scrap. Right. We, we've had to be like, oh, OK, we can't get a good consultant because we can't. So we have to put all the money towards part A. And so now we have no money towards part B. What is that? You know, I mean, so, again, setting us up for failure setting us up for us to not do as good a job, setting us up for us to not have the information that we need to have so that then if we don't include it in our charge, in our recommendations, then we got called for it, right? And that's not fair to us. No, I'm, I'm someone that when I take on something as Ms. Pat, as everyone else on this group is, right? When we take on something, we wanna be thorough and detailed and we wanna do a very good job because if we, if we don't do it, we're not letting just ourselves, right? And our families down, we're letting the residents of Amherst down and specifically the BIPOC residents of Amherst down, right? So I take this, you know, as, as you know, very seriously in terms of this and why we hear again, fighting for scraps, you know? So why, why is it take, you know, Rob Peter to pay Paul and so on and so forth? No, we need the funding to get this done correctly. Right, and I'm not, I like I'm not arguing that point with you nor the part of the consultant or needing it because you guys worked hands in hand but you made the last recommendations on your own and I'm not saying that you guys should do that again. I'm just saying that like you, I'm just trying to, I'm just thinking, I'm just trying to say that there, that I think that you guys can start to move forward with it. And, but you do need the consultant. I'm trying to make myself very clear. I'm not saying that you guys don't need a consultant. I absolutely think that you do. The second part of the charge is super heavy and it almost seems even heavier than the monumental section of the first charge, right? The only difference is there's no money. Um, and I know you guys don't trust the town. And so I, I will offer up that I, I know that just in general, the culture here for the town is is a little, the infrastructure is create a little bit crazy and some of it has to do with race and some of it doesn't. But I know that, we I, you know, I think I'm trying to say like the human resources department is very well aware of 
of PD and we and and as part of the change to the overall culture, we are going to start to look at that and I hope that you guys can chime in with the HR department and and work kind of with them to a certain degree too. But I'm and I'm and I'm not at all trying to take from you guys. I'm not trying to like say that you don't need this because I don't want you guys to fail either, right? Like it was a waste of all of our time regardless of where I sit, right? It's still a waste of time. And so that's not my my thing here. But I, you know, similar to the first one, the the first part of the charge was make the recommendations and you guys made them. And yes, we need to have forms and yes, you can work side by side with the consultant, but you made those, what I'm trying to say is you made those recommendations without the consultant's recommendations, but you did utilize some of their information. And I think that the same thing can happen in the same manner, but you still need it. You just don't have to have it so heavy sided on, on the consultant maybe, I don't know. That's, I do know, that's what I'm trying to say, sorry. Thank that's you, Morgan. Um, Mr. Bockelman, and then I think Ms. Pat also had her hand up. Do you want me to go first, Ms. Pat? Yes, please. Okay. So um, I didn't. So if you have that uh, draft RFP, can we start looking at what that looks like? And if there's something that you need to, or maybe take some time to refine it and look at it again. Um, you know, as you know that you know, doing any kind of RFP takes a, a chunk of time. So I think it would be helpful not to delay, you know, con continue the work like Ms. Moyston said, uh, some of the things you all, you may already know um, where you wanna go or with things you wanna address, but you do need the, the sort of support. So let's look at how we can get there. Um, and let's start with looking at the draft RFP and um, figure out how we can start to build on this. And, um, you know, I, I think it's it's to our benefit to keep the process moving, um, and to you know lay out a timeline and and start to say what what where are the gaps that we need research in? What what are the things we think we can? We I keep saying we. What are the gaps you think you can do your, yourselves with uh, with town support, um, and, and see how we can, we can what we can do on that. I have the last IFB for phase two like on my screen now, I mean, probably don't want to share it because it's kind of late, but I will send it out to you guys and then you guys can go from there with what you guys think. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Moisson. That would be very helpful. Um, Ms. Pat, and then if I might make a few comments also. So basically, it seems like people have said what I wanted to say. Um, when the subcommittee, myself, Alicia and uh, Mr. Rod Ben jones when we first met, I was the one who suggested there is no way any consultant on the planet with the time frame they will be able to do the whole thing for us. I was the one who suggested we break it into part A and part B. Is what I was going to say. I was going to say that um, Mr. Buckman is the same document that you know you created for us, and we just you know decided to do partial, but the other one we didn't touch. And so you should have that document or, you know, uh, Ms. Moisture will send it to us. And I'm glad that uh, Ms. Pereira, you know, raised it. I want to throw out three numbers and I want it to sink in to all of us as we're talking about when it comes to funding for BIPOC projects, okay? One, I'm going to repeat. The front of the town hall, uh, hall, the town common, more than 100K to fix it. Uh, cherry dog costs. The expenses is more than $100,000. Who goes to play golf course? Mostly white people. I just want that to sink in. $100,000 to pay project manager that is someone that will oversee building project for the um, library for if, if we found a um, site for the DW, uh, DPW, uh, did I say that right? For the fire station that will go south, I just want those three num uh, those three 
amount to sink in. Even if I don't say anything else tonight, and they compare to us like begging, negotiating for us to get help from neutral, independent consultant to help us finish the work. I just want that to sink in, okay? I don't even want to go to other places, just, and you know, that's what I hope moving forward to educate people in this town, like follow the money, make comparison, you know, how much is actually trickling into our community? How much? Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Pat. Um, so I just wanted to say that it sounds like from the group that we're interested in, in asking for an extension. Um, I know Mr. Bachman, you wanted to know what we need, but I think it seems like we'd be interested if possible in taking a similar route as we did for the first charge. Um, and so I think it, it would be interesting for us to get another group together to work on the IFB, but only if the funding's available, because then otherwise that would kind of also be a waste of our time to put that whole document together, which took a lot of time and then not to have the funds to be able to use it. Um, so again, my question was not about using the 80K that was set aside for um, racial equity, but was about using free cash that was unused in the budget. And you said that those things could be reallocated after they've been determined that they haven't been used and that there may be a process to be able to use those funds. So what I'm wondering if there is any free cash that we could um, apply to or contest to use to be able to pay the consultants so that we can approach the second part of our charge in a similar manner. Um, and also want to want to pose these questions to Mr. Bockelman and also just a formal request for an extension past June 30th, well into the summer, if that is possible. Yeah, so the free cash doesn't get certified until September or October. Typically, the free cash has to be, we have to give our documentation to the Department of Revenue, and then they certify our free cash number. So that doesn't happen until the fall, typically. So that's not a source of funds for this. Um, and so I, th I think, you know, it sounds like definitely given that we we adjusted the schedule for the first for part A, we're going to have to adjust the schedule for part B as well. Um, so it, it just I just I think part on your agenda tonight, you want to talk about your summer schedule. I think you want to talk about how much time you want to you can devote during the summer. I know people's schedules change during the summer um, and see what what, you know, um, Obviously, you're going to want to, we're going to want to need as much time as possible. Um, so, yeah. So, so I, I think you should just talk amongst yourselves and determine what what your time frame is, what your how it's going to work into your own schedules. But what well, my question though to you was like, do you need to when do you need to get it? So, where our charge is done by September first. So, yep. what's the what's the what's the process in terms of do you get it? Does it need to go in front of the town council? How does how do our recommendations get adopted? Those sort of things. So, so September, I think September one is would be the the last possible date. Um, in terms of the recommendations, most of the recommendations under this part would come to the town manager, and the town manager would implement. Oh, not to, okay. I mean, I think you you may want to take the advantage. I think the council's very interested if you wanted to have the, the the opportunity to present to the public and to the council, I think they would welcome that that presentation. And I think you would, I would guess you would want that as an yeah. opportunity, yeah. Yeah. Is it Pat Council section? In, yeah, sorry, in go ahead, Miss Pat. Sorry. No, go ahead, sorry. I was going to ask, um, Mr. Buckman, it, it's um, is the town council in session during summer? Yeah, let me just, I got the dates on that. So they meet on um, August 2nd and August 23rd. Oh, wow. Okay. So those are the two dates. If you, you, you might want to target those possible dates for yourselves. The 23rd. <laughs> so I guess the question I have for the, uh, our group is, do we, are we still going to be meeting this summer every week? Okay. Ms. Ferreira? 
I mean, my, my thing is, and I heard this from um, Ms. Bowman last time, I think it would still be a good idea for us to uh, have a weekly meeting on the schedule. Cause I think if we start doing a bi-weekly or monthly, then we'll, we can move from traction. And as we're seeing, this is, you know, the part two is part B, part two, whatever it is, it's still gonna be as, imp as important, as serious as part one. And it's gonna entail a lot of work, especially if we do some forums and so on and so forth. And I think we each have to take our time as, as we do, you know, so, you know, I know I have some vacation time. I'm actually going to be abroad and, you know, in a couple of weeks, even though I'm still going to try to be on the meetings, but let's say if I can't be on the meetings then I'm not there, but you all can still keep trucking along, you know, um, because if we start doing bi weeklies or monthlies, then there we go. Then, you know, I don't, I don't see the work moving forward, especially with the summer schedule, you know, with the summer, I mean, with summer and summer vacations and, and stuff like that, you know? That's my two cents. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Ferrer. Um, yeah, and so also I was thinking that the extension would also influence our meeting schedule. So if we are able to, um, I'm not sure if that was a confirmation from Mr. Balkelman that we can extend this out until August, then I think that gives us more time than if our extension is not going to happen. I think that might influence how often we'd want to meet as well. Yes, I agree. So my, thinking, so my thinking is, I know that, you know, the last possible day is September 1st. I was hoping it would be September 30th. And perhaps for the month of July and August, we can do bi-weekly uh, so that we can have everything done before the end of September. I mean, I guess that that would be up to Mr. Bachman or the town council, whatever, because remember, our charge ends on September 1st. So unless, I know that. Unless so that's that's my thinking, like if we can, you know, extend it to the end of the month. Well, that's a question for Mr. Bachman is can we extend it to the end of the month, uh, end of September? I think it, it ends on September 1. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, I think we should recognize that all the work that needs to be done isn't going to be done i think we're going to have a to-do list after after this of additional work that needs to be done for the next iteration that whatever needs to be the additional work that needs to be done in the town i think um this is an important chunk of it but i think it's most likely by the end of your charge it, this work is never done so there's always going to be the next thing that has to what's the next phase of things that has to be done so i think um we should be thinking along those lines as well like What's on the next stage? What's on the what's at the next stage? Thank you, Ms. Moyston. Um, don't you guys think part of the next stage though should be that you guys just continue as a permanent committee, even if you guys change your name. if some of the members can't continue on, that you can Paul can appoint new members or Mr. Balkelman can appoint new members. I think that the one of the most important things is that this committee, whether whatever the name be, um, is continued because it kind of helps. And then you can kind of possibly spread the work out a little bit farther if needed, not saying that it will be needed, but if needed, mm -hmm. um, if you guys were a standing committee as opposed to a working group. Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, and I guess that's the thing, but I keep on hearing from Mr. Bachman that that's not going to happen because then he, he keeps saying, uh, Mr. Bachman, you keep saying that, yeah, you all don't need to get everything done and then, you know, and then there will be, you'll leave us a list of to do's and stuff. But the, the thing that we're trying to communicate to you and others in the, in, in the community, it, like town council and so on and so forth, is that a group like us, right, that's been dedicated, that's been doing the research, that's committed to this is not going to be the same thing as now someone else picking up the baton. That's not gonna be the same thing. We already have the momentum, we have the, the knowledge base, we, we have the expertise we've been formulating as a team, as a group for all of these months, right? So if you disband us and then we just leave you with a, a to-do list, it's not gonna get done with the same kind of tenacity and the same type of you know, seriousness and ardor that we have taken on, right? And so, and even if let's say, 
we want to go on beyond this, like was what Ms. Moisson said, you know, maybe all of us might not be able to, but we could still bring on some some other members and they would still be members who have been on this and, and for the last few months. So it would keep that continuity, you know? So my question to you, Mr. Bachman, which again goes towards my, again, not trustingness of the town, is that, is that what you all are trying to do to make sure that things kind of die out after September 1st? <laughs> because <laughs> then we're not gonna do it anymore and so therefore there we go you know no. things go back to the same old after september 1st <laughs> mr bachelman so no, no i think at the beginning of the meeting no that's not my intention at the beginning of the meeting um we talked about what is the group look like and i think one of the things was the the Police Oversight Committee, right? And then once we figure out what's in what's in their bailiwick, right? And then I think the successor group to you, I mean, your charge will be finished. You know, everything that's written into your charge will be completed. I'm not saying that this, this group itself or whatever can't continue, but I think it's gonna be a new, we're gonna to have to figure out what is the new thing that sits there. Um, and we have to come up with a new charge and then see what people wanna do. And I think, so then we're gonna have the oversight group that's going to be focused on the police department and and maybe you know maybe a, a more expansive role and then there'll be this uh, the other group and then it's really important to have that conversation about who's doing what and understanding who's who's got what role so there's not confusion um and is the police oversight i mean i i we don't know the answer to these questions is the police oversight committee just to sit there in case there's a complaint about the police and then they handle that or is this a group that is actively evaluating policies and uh, meeting with the chief and looking at statistics on a regular basis and that kind of thing. Uh, and then if that's the case for that group, what is the other group going to do? What is their charge? And so I think those are all really strong questions. And it's and so when I say this group, your charge will have been completed. And uh, so it doesn't mean this, the folks, I mean, I truly appreciate, I think you're all, um, have have brought and have gained so much knowledge that we don't want to lose that and so how some people might say i want to be on the police one others might say i want to be on this new thing uh, how uh, but i think that's all part of the conversation that we have to have over the next couple months miss ferrera yeah just to kind of respond i mean my i i know that the oversight group we still need to kind of delineate a lot of details and uh, specifics because obviously that's part of this part b right to really get more into the details about the oversight group however what i've heard and obviously being on the cswg for this last couple of months my the important thing that i see in terms of cswg or whatever entity ends up kind of, I guess, being formulated on September 2nd, because I guess that's what it seems like, right? This new group is gonna be birthed on September 2nd, is that all of our recommendations, right? Because you presented to the Budget Finance Committee this timeline, and then you even put in our other recommendations and so on and so forth. I would like to see all our recommendations put in place for Part A and whatever other recommendations that are, are we're gonna be recommending Part B, also be put into place. And I think that we, or even if it's not just all, it, let's say some of our members leave or whatever, but whatever core group stays as part of this group ends up being the one monitoring these recommendations for however long it takes into its finality, right? And it might be something else too, but at least it's recommendations. For me, that is very important that the recommendation for part A and part B, I'm sorry, but I can't leave it in your hand or in other people's hand as a to-do list. I don't see that happening, you know? Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. And um, if I might just say something really quick before Ms. Pat. Um, so what I would propose if everyone is okay with um, is that, because I'm, also, I'm not sure if it's in specifically in Mr. Bachelman's ability by himself to extend our group and our charge. Um, that this might be something also we present to the town council. So if we do decide to reach out to town council members directly, that we might say that our ask is to reject the budget in full and to continue the work of the CSWG while um, for the duration of the implementation of all of our recommendations or something like that, adding that to the specific ask of the town council, because if the town council tasks it to the town manager again, that's how it became under the control of the town manager was through appointment of the town council. So I think that we could also use that as a strategy in our ask if that's something that we're looking for to happen. Um, Ms. Pat? 
what I wanted just to say is that after, you know, I got an interview, okay? And the first night that we met, or maybe the second meeting, I knew as an administrator myself that even after we recommend everything, the people who recommended it really need to follow through to make sure that it's implemented. I knew earlier on that it will, it, will not, it will not make any sense to disband CSWG in September. I was looking at this like a project beyond one year. How are you going to recommend something and then not know how it worked out? I do not participate in projects like that. I will not agree to do something like that. Even though it said September, I'm like, let me put, so that's the difference. Let me put my, my fit on the door and then and let's see. Even though people want me like, but they just want to check the box. I said, you don't know who I am. That's not going to happen. They're not going to check the box. And so that's where I am. I don't know about, you know, the rest of you. I didn't think that it made any sense to disband CSWG in September. And I, I've been raising that concern since that time. That's what I want to say. It's eight o'clock now, so we need to be wrapping up. Yes. Yeah, so just in light of that, we were a little bit all over the board tonight, but we did actually touch on most of our agenda items, just not um, linearly. Um, and so I just wanted to confirm a couple of things before we end tonight. One is that whether or not we have a firm answer on the extension for our report, if Mr. Bachelman, you could let us know if that's something you need to get back to us on, or if we can definitely have at least until the end of August for that. Um, and then also um, th whether or not we can continue the charge after. I think those things though that we can, if everyone's okay with continue this discussion next meeting, but I think that we would need to know just in terms of timeline and urgency, whether or not we can get that extension because that does limit our content for the next th three meetings that we have if we cannot have an extension. So, sorry, Mr. Buckman, is that going to be something that we can get an answer? I'll get back to, to you prior to the next, I'll get this okay. back to you before the next meeting. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Buckman. Um, and so I think that may inform all of our strategies moving forward. I don't know um, if as a group, we wanted to make a quick decision on whether or not you would want me or Brianna or both of us to reach out to town council members to see if we could set up a time that we can meet with them, or if you just want us to send emails, to, informational emails to each of them or if there's something that we want to decide with that before um, ending this meeting. Yeah. No, no, yeah, I think that that would be important, um, you know, to kind of reach out to them and say what it is that we want to happen before the 21st uh, vote. Um, you know, and I guess, like you said, Alicia, uh, you know, to say that it's, uh, reject the budget and to um, extend CSWG until the recommendations um, get implemented, all of our recommendations get implemented. I think that might be the thing to communicate to the town members. Um, I think you and Brianna can talk it, talk it through and see what you would want, right? Because, you know, if you want it, just be you all kind of outreach to different town council members and discuss it. Or if you want us to kind of take on, you know, divvy it up, you know, divvy it up and assign some town council members to, to me and to the rest of the uh, CSWG group willing to do that so that we can outreach, call them and, and, and explain to them. But we just need to make sure we're all on the same page about what it is that we're, we're, we're doing. And then lastly, I think we should still, even though I know right now we don't have a commitment, firm commitment in terms of money, we should at least look at that RFP and then come prepared to talk about it at our next meeting. I think that should be already on the agenda. I sent it to you guys. Yeah, no, you, you sent it, uh, Ms. Moise, but I'm saying just for to add that to the agenda that we will discuss it at the next meeting. So it's- Yeah, um, I think that's a great suggestion. Thank you, Ms. Ferrer. If everyone could take a look at the, um, the RFB, I did see it, Ms. Moise did send it in the email. And just keep in mind when going over it, like 
essential and necessary things that would be for a consulting a consulting group to do and maybe we can try to redact some things and make it a smaller document just in terms of the the issues surrounding funding so i think that would be something that the working group we can all work on separately and just group back next meeting and discuss our thoughts around that um and then in terms of reaching out to the town council i would be happy to do one of two things just send out a general email to all town council members asking to arrange time to meet with them, um, just so that they know that we're looking to meet with them before the vote, because I because we also have a, a little bit of a time limit there. And then I don't know if I would be happy to set up a time with Rihanna if she's available to speak with each one of them. I think it has to be a one on one conversation, like where we can either do a zoom meeting or if anybody's willing to do in person so it can be interactive and not just an email exchange, I think would be beneficial for us at this point. Um, mm -hmm. And if anybody wants to take on like one council member, I think that would also be helpful, but I don't think it's necessary. And mm -hmm. I don't want to, if you guys don't have the time for that, that's something I can make time for. So I just want to also ask that if you guys feel the need to reach out to one, um, that's a possibility. Otherwise, I think me and Brianna can take that on. So that's fine. Yeah, if you all can take it on. Then. Is that okay, Miss Owen? Sorry, I volunteered you. Um, no, yeah, no, I think okay. that's great. Okay, great. Um, so we have that and then I think we continue our discussion about whether or not the CSWG can be a standing committee after we get all of that information and we speak with everybody else. And then I also think that next meeting we can discuss our summer meeting schedule because we'll have an idea about our extension at that time. So those were the, the last two agenda items that we didn't necessarily get to today, Ms. Pat. So um, I know I'm the reason why we moved our our time, our day to Thursday. I noticed that Ross, Mr. Ross is not here tonight. I wondered if if we go back to Wednesday at six o'clock. I mean, oh no, somebody's saying no. No? What is that, Ms. Meister? Uh, he's just out of town and for like um, a family gathering or something. So he had informed us that he wasn't gonna be here at today's meeting, but um, he'll be at next Thursday's. And I appreciate the work that, thank you for letting us know. I appreciate the work that he did, um, the stuff that you sent us off this afternoon. So I didn't think uh, we should discuss it when he's not here. If we can put that in on the agenda for next week. Well, yeah, some of the stuff that he put together for us. Yes, I think that would be. Um, so he put together a very detailed and very well thought out document as to yeah. ideas for the, the organizational structure of the committee. And I think that would also be if everyone could take a look at that, it was included in this in today's agenda. If you didn't see the email directly from Russ, um, if everyone could take a look at that also for next meeting, that would be a good lead for our discussion, I think as well. Thank you, Ms. Pat, for bringing that up. Yep. Okay, and then so just to also confirm, our next meeting is going to be next Thursday at five thirty. Okay, and. Um, unless there is anything else that anybody would like to share at this time, I would like to, um, Ms. Moitzen. So the Human Rights Commission Youth Hero Awards are this Saturday. I mean, we're a little bit low key because we're just coming out of COVID. We're not having our typical fabulous barbecue or anything, you know, we're probably going to have pre-wrapped sandwiches and um, maybe some pizza and stuff because there's a lot of concern about serving food and, and stuff like that. So unfortunately, it's not going to be one of our more spectacular ones, but it, we are still having it. And so it is on Saturday, June 5th from 1130 to 3 p.m. And so we had a large group of kids from the Amherst Pelham Regional School System who participated in an anti-racist um, art competition. So it's kind of neat. And so every, kids from fourth grade on up participated. So it's great. Well, that's nice. Thank you for sharing, Ms. Moiston. So I just have one thing, and I can't remember the name now, but as I was watching um, MS. NBC and there is uh, a group of really smart black men that came up with app. If you get pulled over by police, you can press that app and it will take you directly to an attorney who could interact with the police and you know make sure that um, 
the motorist um, civil right is not being violated or something like that. If you get pulled over, maybe for speeding and they started looking inside your car, maybe you have drugs or something like that, or want to search your car or something like that, you can press that app. I'll get the name and, and I will send it to everybody. I, yeah, I'm like, oh, wow, somebody thought about that. That's nice. <laughs> so I just wanted to share that. Thank you for sharing, Ms. Pat. Okay, with all of our business being complete um, tonight, I would like to declare this meeting adjourned and thank you all for your time um, and contributions tonight. Second, oh, you didn't second. Okay. Oh, do I have to call a motion, Ms. Winston? Or can I, okay, yeah, sorry. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, I'll see you next week. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.